when your parents took you to Sears for pictures in the 80s. This is how people first started getting paid for advertisements. Do you remember this Kirby vacuum cleaner? Yes, I do. 100%. We had one just like it, except it had like a gray colored bag. We might be older now, but in the 70s, we lived during an awesome era, listening to the greatest bands and drove the coolest cars. You might be 80s, but you will never be as 80s as David Hasselhoff playing Atari while driving a Pontiac Trans Am. Crack the Egg was all fun and games until you got hit with a double bounce and went flying off the trampoline. I know from first-hand experience. This is very true. There was a time when we respected the computer. Sorry for being nostalgia baited, but it was kind of nice when the internet was a single, solitary, unmoving place, instead of a tear that extends to everywhere. You went to this specific spot to go to the internet. When you left the spot, you left the internet. It was a place. Sometimes it's nice having access to the internet anytime you want to, but the downside is you can never get away from it. Morning, Sam. Oh, uh, good morning, Ralph. Every house in the 70s and 80s. This was some of the real nice wood paneling here, and not super dark colored like most of it was. Family video, second only to Blockbuster. I think the last one of these brick and mortar stores just closed down a few years ago. If you know what this is for, drop it down in the comments. Were you born in the 60s, 70s, or 80s? If so, you're a bad. If you don't get this, you're not a true horror fan. If you go beyond your limit, please don't drive. Phone home. When beer commercials knew exactly who their target audience was. How many people remember this thermostat? And what temperature did your dad set it to? And dare the kids not to touch it. He left me because I said I don't like electric cars. He just grabbed his man purse, pulled his hair up in a bun, and said when the car is charged in an hour, he's gone. This slide wasn't supposed to be in this video. It's supposed to be in my next episode of Laugh While the World Burns. But this is pretty much to the point in time that we're at. Since we're here, most of you who enjoy the Gen X and Millennial series videos, you'll also like my Laugh While the World Burns series. So check them out on the channel. I'll drop both playlists in the description below the video. Let me introduce you to my friends in the 80s. How many of you remember these adapters that turned a 45 to be able to run on a regular record player? They've actually all aged pretty well. Doc actually does look like a scientist. And Biff looks like a politician. What was the name of the device that these went to? Drop it in the comments. Back in the 80s, if you didn't have a Nintendo Game Boy, then this was your mobile gaming device. My parents in the 1980s. Let's move closer to a city so we can raise a family. It'll be easier to find work. Me in 2024. We need to get as far away from civilization as possible and start homesteading. Before World War III hits and the second American Civil War starts. If you think this man is needed more now than ever before to teach the younger generations, then drop his name down in the comments. Captain Caveman! How many people remember the antennas on the roof that looked like this? Our VHF antenna looked like that bottom one there, but our UHF antenna was vertical and the rods were curved like a dish shape. And between the two of them, we picked up about 11 or 12 channels, most of them pretty clearly, including the NASCAR races down in Florida. I've had some viewers that asked me in the comments to include these in one of my videos. For the rest of you, if you know what it's called, drop it in the comments. 
Let's play What Is This Device? One hint, back in those days we didn't have to worry about getting an error message. Share this video if you remember. I mostly remember these because my mom was always on me about wasting the roll, labeling unnecessary things. Who remembers swinging so high, the poles lifted up out of the ground? Yes they would. And what were all of us trying to achieve when we did this? Trying to make a full 360. Which most of us didn't know at the time. That is impossible to do on a chain swing. The only type of swings that it is possible to do a full 360 on is what they call a rigid swing. Which means instead of the chains you'd have solid steel bars that connected the swinging seat to the top bar. This was another request from some of my viewers on past videos. What is the name of this game? Kids complaining about Spotify. They don't know the real struggle. This was the true downside of cassette tapes. Because then we'd be sitting there trying to get these bird's nest of tape out of the cassette player without actually damaging or breaking the tape. Stop trying to ruin my childhood. Share this if you know it is just a car and not a symbol of hate. Most people have no idea about real history. All they know is the so-called history that's been rewritten and twisted to push an agenda. What was contained in these two bottles? Puppy bus ride? If you've ever played on this puke causing, concussion giving, bone breaking, kid rocket launching hunk of metal and survived, you are a true warrior. How many of you got to ride one of these when somebody brought their dirt bike, laid it on its side, put the rear tire against the bottom edge, and then it hit the gas and it spun faster and faster until only one kid remained. Millennials living through Y2K, 9-11, a plague, two economic recessions, and a possible World War III, all before they hit 40. Don't forget the second U.S. Civil War. That's coming in some point or another. 80s kids be like, my first iPod. If you remember this milk carton, your childhood was lit. Instead of buying the smaller pack or the small carton, I'd always continue to try to save my money up to buy the big carton. Because you got more BBs for the same money. Back when even TV trays were real furniture. Heavens to Murgatroyd! 90% of the people watching my videos know exactly what this is. Today in 1987, your school served you this for lunch, and you were excited about it. As far as school lunches goes, that was about the best you were going to get. But you usually wanted one of the inner pieces because it had more cheese on it. These dogs ruled the 90s. He's an insult to dogs everywhere. People born before 1990. What trivial skill do you possess that no one uses anymore? That answer, very sadly, is true today. I always wanted my own little bunny rabbit. I will name him George and I will hug him and pet him and squeeze him. Do you remember punch balls? Yes, I do. But how many of you remember hitting someone else in the face with one of them? Flat screens are nice and all, but they'll never compare to the television, record player, liquor cabinet combo extravaganza we had as kids. How many of you remember S&H green stamps? I know these started long before Gen X. But they had them all through our generations, all the way up, I believe, even until the late 80s. We might be old, but we had great hair, listened to cool music, and drove the best cars. So I've heard all these dumb <coughs> challenges kids are coming up with. Here's to finish school and stay out of jail. I agree with this. 
as long as it's homeschool. Because in my opinion, the last place that you need to send your kid to is what has become the public indoctrination centers. How many people remember this game? I don't know what the name of it was, and I didn't own one, but I do remember playing it. Wile E. Coyote, define physics to a whole new level. Why was it with things like this made absolutely no sense, but yet at the same time in the old cartoons, it seemed like it should work. I grew up in an era where you had to go to Channel 3 to play video games. How many of you remember having to play with the little RF switch adapter where you selected channels 3 or 4 and you'd sit there and fiddle with it because the wire was broke internally and you had to keep moving it around until you finally got a clear picture of the game and then not touch it anymore. The electric football. True to life football, and you're the playmaker. This was another suggestion from one of my viewers here on the channel. From Nostalgia from Your Childhood, Point of View. It's the last day of school before winter break in the early 2000s. Nostalgia is inherently fascist coded. Only in today's world. Can even your memories be fascist, or racist, or whatever other trigger word of the day is? They're literally running out of things to call racist and fascist. And yet it's the people that say these things who are actually the ones that are racist and fascist and everything else. Fingerprint Analyzer. Push in until you get this red light. Then place your finger on it for 5 seconds to get your analysis. If you're like me, and believe there's people today that would actually try this, drop the words red light down in the comments. Whoa, camel, whoa, 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 camel, whoa! Oh, come on, whoa! When I say whoa, I mean whoa! Today's kids will never understand the sheer magnificence of this structure in your home. I remember when my dad had a system similar to this when I was a kid with the iconic glass door cabinet. In the late 90s I bought a Pioneer system that had a dual cassette deck that I used to make really custom mixtapes because I could re-record the songs onto the second deck in any order that I wanted. And I also bought a 25 disc CD changer. One. Oh, three or four. This character was another suggestion from one of my viewers. If you know the name of this, drop it down in the comments. Name a game you played outside as a child that kids these days don't play anymore. Well, I feel you can name just about anything here because these days. Kids just don't play outside anymore. But just to pick one of the games we used to play was flashlight tag. How many people remember having these in school? We usually just used Elmer's glue in school, but sometimes when we was using poster paper, the teacher would pull this bottle out. How many people remember when you could actually buy the correct size shoes? And that shoe sizes actually meant something. These days you don't even find half sizes. You can hardly find anything that's extra wide. And a lot of shoes is marked with two sizes. Like 10 to 11s or 12 to 13s. And most times even if you have two pair of the same type shoes. With the same size label on each of them. A lot of times when you put them on they'll still actually be different sizes. The original Popsicle. Robocop. 1987 versus 2014. I watched the newer Robocop just a couple years ago, and it was pretty good, but it still doesn't beat the original. Shoved in the back with no AC, video games, iPads, TV, or internet, and I still survived. How many of you guys used to collect the Cracker Jack miniature baseball cards? 
I had a whole stack of them, probably about a hundred. I think this was in the late 80s or very early 90s, and I didn't know it at the time, but those were a reprint. I just found out recently that the original ones were made around 1914 and 1915, and today those are worth a lot of money. No bottled water, we drank from a garden hose, and every Sunday all the stores were closed. It was a different life when we were boys and girls. Not just a different time, it was a different world.